1966 Sears 11 inch solid state portable black and white television part two. The first uh, part we just assessed it, wanted to see what was wrong with it, quick diagnosis. Turned out that electrolytic capacitors were the main problem. It worked strong CRT. In this video, I've ordered all the electrolytic capacitors. They're here. I'm going to recap the set and also clean it. Uh, this is a Toshiba made set. And just to kind of throw another one in here, I was looking through my stash of TVs to restore and I came up with this. It's a 1970. This is a 1970 Sears solid state. You can see they got rid of transistorized by the time this came around and again it's another almost barn find I believe it had a uh, piece of like smoked glass over the front I don't really need that anyway but this is into the 70s when things were getting a little bit more disco-y with the swivel base and the This is a Sanyo made set. The other one, the 66 is Toshiba. This one's made by Sanyo. It's not all germanium. It's actually got quite a few silicon transistors, except the horizontal output and vertical output. The high power transistors are still uh, germanium. So, crusty, crusty. You know, maybe in the future we can do this one. It's probably going to need the same thing to be recapped. Um, yeah, this can be repainted and it can be cleaned up. The plastic is changing color. You can kind of see there what color it was. It was like a white. I guess that's sun damage. Here are all the electrolytic capacitors. Got enough plastic bags here to suffocate an orphanage but this is what it takes and this is pretty much all of them plus a, a few what I would do is on the common values like 1 4.7 3.310 microfarad I'd order you know one extra capacitor but this is really about how many capacitors this television set takes. I mean, it, it's... Recapping this is going to be a big job. There's no doubt about it. Also in part one we learned the speaker is dead, so I need to find a speaker. Um, and the tuner is very dirty. So these circuit boards look like they're fully removable. There's a connector here, connector up here, and a connector over here. So it looks like the circuit boards are fully removable to be externally serviced. Of course I'm going to take a bunch of pictures as well as I'm getting video of it. Uh, this board here looks like it just has that connector there. It's actually got to have more than that I believe. Uh, maybe it's got one under here. Oh, it looks like the CRT socket might be... Hopefully the boards are completely removable. Then we got some stray capacitors. We got one there. And I know there's a couple back behind the power supply regulator transistor. But yeah, there's, there's just a ton of them. You can see them down in there. There's just layers of them. So anyway, we're going to get to recapping. It's just going to be a bulk recap. I might test the capacitors one at a time. I'm going to watch my work very carefully to make sure I get the right value and I get the positive and negative in correctly. Um, this is not quite like a tube set where I can do one at a time. If I was to try and do that with this, I would wear the connectors out before I got finished. 
So yeah, let's get to recapping. And I will say that I didn't spend a whole lot of time selecting capacitors. I kind of selected them uh, more based on the ripple current and the price and availability and kind of the popularity of sales than I did really sit down and do my research. So that's why we got gold ones and red ones and purple ones and brown ones and black ones, but they're all Nichicon. Some of them might be audio grade, some of them might be automotive grade, some of them might just be generic filter and bypass, but they should all be decent caps. And the main goal of this video is just to get this TV to work right. I really doubt I'm gonna you know, use this TV. It's kind of pointless to have one of these TVs today anyway with the analog over-the-air signals gone. It's more of a novelty than anything. Just to make this video a little bit more confusing, so here's the guts of the Sanyo and there's the Toshiba and you can kind of see why I like the Toshiba better. It, it's just the way it's laid out. It seems like it's more there and I don't know I mean, there's some interesting things about this one, like the way they have the transistors in their sandwiched, the TO3 package transistors, the speaker. This is another, you know, baked desert set. Yeah, you know, where, where are, where are the circuit boards? So is this the deflection circuit board here? This is the deflection and what is this IF and audio down here. This actually looks remarkably serviceable. These boards just unplug and pull out. This one here, you just see it pulls out and there's Sanyo. It's like, where are the components in this? I mean, you got two little boards here, one little board there. In the Toshiba, you have this great big board and then this big board here. And I looked at the SAMs for this and it uses just about the same number of electrolytic capacitors as the Toshiba, so where are the boards hidden? But you just, this thing looks really, really baked compared to, and they're both in bad shape, but this one looks extra crisp. And there's what I mean by modular. Little tiny black and white TV that was modular. First thing we want to do with this one is test the CRT, but anyway, we got to get this one going. Time to recap. I was looking for a cord for this guy here, which I'm about to recap. This is the subject we're working on. And I found this in my stash, which was another Sears TV from a a mine site that a friend of mine owned. It was once a booming little uh, company village but is now dead and I found this with the cord and this is a Toshiba also. Starts with the prefix 562 and this is the same cord. So I no longer have to use a suicide cord on our recap -y to test it. So I believe I checked this out in a previous video and it was dead so uh, maybe in a future video try and alternate between black and white and color TVs but this is I think this is 1971 or 72 and boy there was a huge jump in uh, uh, technology between the 68 and the 72. So, anyway, I found me a cord. So, rolling up on the dirty green carpet this morning is the 1966 Sears, why do I want to say Silvertone, but Toshiba. Recap E, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this board. I'm going to take a bunch of pictures of this, not that I don't already have enough video of it. I'm going to remove this board, and we'll just start to do a bulk recap on it. And maybe I'll check some of the caps as I uh, 
change them maybe not we'll see I'll do a spot check a few of them I'm not gonna go real deep into it we know they're crap recapping is easy just change it with the same microfarad and a higher voltage same or higher voltage get the polarity correct that's it not much to it so we get inside and we start to kind of see the level of nastiness here with capacitors and there's a nice selenium rectifier there and look at the big filter capacitor and also there's some other smaller ones and I'd like to clean and service the tuner which looks like it's going to be very difficult this whole thing might end up becoming torn apart to fully service it anyway uh, this board is out I'm gonna take a bunch of high-resolution photos of this because you as you can see these green ones are marked with a negative on top and sometimes this germanium based stuff is not intuitive because the ground is actually positive and they're feeding a positive or a negative voltage in on the collector so it's not quite intuitive uh, so you want to document it's not marked it, it doesn't appear to be marked on the board what's positive and negative here so I'm not gonna chance it I got a phone it's got a camera I'm gonna document it hey, just a few notes on this the first capacitors off right there and it appears that it has an arrow underneath the capacitor pointing towards the negative so that's a a good thing uh, so here's our first pull off the board and no this is not accurate I wouldn't I wouldn't give this thing really any stock uh, it's just kind of a reference we can use so this is the old capacitor trying to keep the reflection off that so this is a 10 microfarad um, capacitor and it's measuring 20.62 the ESR is 2.4 ohms and the VLOS is 2.2 percent let's just do this live this is one of the new Nichicon capacitors out of the digikey bag this one measures 10.58 microfarads at 1.3 ohms ESR V loss is 1% so this measures double its microfarad value and double the ESR of the new Nichicon. Check this one out. This is a 5 microfarad. It's measuring basically 10 microfarads and look at the uh, look at the ESR, 150 ohms. Let's check the new one. Here's the new one. 4.7, this is a 4.7, so it's measuring 4.7, the ESR is 1.9, not 150, so that thing is dead. I've been going through, kind of replacing these, testing them as I go along, and I haven't found any that stand out as real bad, except that first one that I showed, or the second one, I don't remember, the 4.7. I did find this, uh... And I don't know if I did this by moving it around. I've been being very gentle. You can see right there the solder on this one is broken. And there's a couple under here, of course. So I'm going to have to get the big 150 watt iron out and get this can open. But I've just been doing um, the yellow ones. I haven't got into the gray ones yet. This board has been completely recapped. And just a few observations here. I double checked my work several times to make sure I didn't put anything in backwards. 
I got all the right values. It's pretty simple. These are all 15 volt caps on this board. I guess is the IF audio board. A few observations on the caps. None of them were really bad, except they've all about doubled in value. And the ESR is up a little bit, but none of them are really what I would consider open, except that one. One of the very first ones I changed that was a 5 microfarad. All the rest of them are, would, work, would work as filters or bypass. I don't think any of these on this board are really critical as to the value. Now when we get in here to the sweep board, the values are more critical on these because they're they just are especially in the vertical circuit so this board is done it took probably a little over an hour I'm gonna take a break then I'll pull that bottom board and we'll do that one here's the deflection board and I gotta say as far as ease of service goes with this TV these boards come right out in like a minute uh, they're all plugs they're all connections, all connectors. Um, this is a capacitor right here that was shorted in the first video. This one was shorted, causing the horizontal hold control to have no effect. I just took and broke it out of there with a screwdriver and that at least we got some sort of a picture, but this will be the next one to recap. I wish I had my air compressor here. I'd blow this off, gently blow this off trying to stay away from the inductors but I don't so I'll just have to deal with the crustage oh crap here's a non-polarized see that NP oops um, non-binary crap I didn't I don't think that was specified in the parts list so I might have to order a nine non-binary capacitor for that huh crap alright this is a two microfarad non-polarized capacitor 15 volts what I'm going to end up using is I'm going to pull two of these off this board these are I believe these are monolithic and these are 105 so these are one microfarad and there's two of them on here and they are non-polarized so we'll have a double non-binary polarized party. Two microfarads at 0.31 ohms ESR. 5.5 5 microfarads at 5.3 ohms ESR. Much better monolithic. The deflection board has all been recapped. And I'm going to show a couple notable caps that I pulled out of here. This one here, 200 microfarad at 6 volts. It's measuring 527 microfarads. This one, 50 microfarad at 15 volt. What is that? 0.02 that's open look at it doesn't even give an ESR reading for it it's so dead it's measuring like a disk capacitor and then of course we had this one here that was shorted I think the next step is to remove the chassis because I see several in here and I need to clean the um, tuner all right, now we're in deep. Now we can really get our Jason JJ Cruz on going deep into the recapping process. So we got one here, one hidden in there, this one, and then we'll clean the tuner. And while I got this apart, 
I might just pull this all out so I can scrub it with some good cleaner and make it clean. Okay, so this one is 3,000 and 1,000, A and B. And you can see B, they have it stamped on the pin. That's a little different. You know, I don't think I'm going to remove this or gut it and restuff it. I'm going to just find, I'm going to cut the grounds off or something and find another place to put these capacitors. Okay, the 3000 is up here. I'll show you from the back in a minute. The 1000 is right here. It's not awesome, but it's good. I replaced this one. I have two right here on the high voltage box and one right here on the high voltage box. I got three more it looks like. Jason JJ Cruz is today's phrase it pays on 104.9 Big Power Low IQ FM. I'm gonna take this and see how well I can clean it. A little Tinker Toy CRT. Just a little This is in pretty bad shape. I don't know if the camera's showing how scratched it is, but it's pretty bad. So this is absolutely the most incredible cleaner I've ever used for TVs. This is the stuff that's pink and the... Um, Usually you get one of those weird door-to-door -door salesmen that comes around with used motor oil and likes to pour it in your carpet or on your driveway and then show you how good this stuff works. This stuff is real. Like This is the best cleaner I've ever used. It makes these TVs squeaky clean. I mean literally squeaky clean. Alright, it's all back together. At least I think it's all back together. It's hard to tell. The only thing left I got to replace is the speaker. And yeah, it uh, looks a little different. It's a lot cleaner now. So let's power it up, see if it produces a raster. If it does, let's celebrate by popping some of these caps. Hey, okay, here goes. And of course, there's no sound, so we won't hear anything. Oh, nice. Uh, let's pop some caps and then we'll take this inside and see how it works. All right, so what we do is we just take our suicide cord, definitely ear protection and eye protection. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna connect them right across the line. Um, this is that 200 microfarad that measured uh, 500, let's see what happens if we just put 120 volts across it. Here we go. Well, that was pretty weak. Actually, it just cremated the clip lead, so here we go. Oh, yeah. 30 microfarad axial lead. God, some of these... Oh yeah. So check out how that last one was not dried out. See the liquid that came out of it? Okay, we got a 30 microfarad, uh, one of those green ones. Check that out. See how a little streamer came out of the top of that? Isn't that party flavored? 300 microfarad. Got to get those safety glasses on. 100 microfarad, 15 volt. Oh yeah. That one, come on focus you stupid thing. That one actually vented right out the side. It blew a hole in it. Okay, this is a 10 microfarad. These are the ones that blow out the top. Here we go. End of the line. Okay, so my new phone has a super slow mode. I'm doing super slow mode here, a thousand frames per second. Probably looks pretty good. 
Okay, here's a 200. We're gonna do this one super slow mode too. Here we go. Oh yeah. Okay, this is the Big Daddy. This is the 800. Here we go. I'm a little bit nervous about this one. Here we go. A lot of smoke. Look at this frickin' mess. Capacitor pieces all over the place. All right, back to our TV repair show. I got it hooked up to the signal generator, pattern generator, so let's see. Let's rotate the yoke and try and get this See if I can electrocute myself here. A horizontal hold. There we go, vertical hold. So I've recapped it and that's the garbage I get. Really. This thing's been fully recapped. We got full vertical deflection now and the actually looks good, but there's a Rotating the fine tuning is not doing anything. Ooh, so that, that's if I. Yeah, the fine tuning is not working. That's just it. I can't fine tune it. If I use the. On the pattern generator, if I bend the IF frequency, or if I shift it 4.5 kilohertz, look at that, it cleans right up. Yeah, there's a problem where the fine tuning doesn't work. Let me try going up a channel.
Yeah, it's all fine tuning. if I turn the power level down. That looks okay. It's a little shadowy. So the recapping sorted out, the recapping and cleaning the tuner sorted some of it. But there's still something wrong here because I don't get snow. I should be getting snow. Now oh, there's snow. Yeah, the fine tuning needs to work. That's a big deal. You can't do anything with it if the fine tuning doesn't work. see what I'm doing wrong here. Okay, well I got the, the knob is just spinning on the fine tuning shaft, but here I can fine tune it and something something's not right. Look at all the ringing in it. could be one of those problems it's like impossible to figure out okay let's rock the crepe race here for a minute um, it looked like this in the first video and chalked it up to bad filter capacitors and filter capacitors did change some of it it fixed the vertical I haven't adjusted anything and but we still have this kind of overloading low uh, crappy low quality picture and um, I thought it was the capacitors well that teaches me there we go again with proof that you know capacitors hardly ever correct everything so this thing has been completely recapped. Unless I miss something, I really doubt it because I went by the parts list and I went by the crepe erase. This does not have an AGC adjustment. I don't see any adjustment to tweak the crepes. Give us 
some of our most skeptical customers. So I saw the ads for Crepe Erase, I saw the before and after pictures, I didn't believe in the brouhaha about a magic potion that it was going to work, but I was blown away because the first time I used Crepe Erase, it was like instantaneous. All I could think of was where can I get more of this? This is amazing. The Crepe Erase has done something more than just make my skin look good. It's also given me a lot more confidence in areas that I really didn't think I would build it into. You carry yourself differently, you stand a little taller. Confidence does come from within. If you're skeptical about trying Crepe Erase, I'm going to tell you from the bottom of my heart, where confidence is everything at this age, where what's the point seems to be a lot of women's mantra after 50. It's like no definition, it's just garbage. Just totally creped out. So I'm going directly into the IF right now, bypassing the tuner. And yeah, it looks better. I don't see all the ringing and stuff, but the vertical lock is still really, really soft. I mean... Yeah, it might be multiple problems. It might be a tuner problem, it might be an IF problem, and a sink problem. I would think the vertical lock should be... I mean, look at how far you can bend the horizontal before it... The horizontal's rock solid, or it seems pretty good. But the vertical is just soft. So we might have to do a part three on this. Let me think about it. This is really crepey. My age giveaway zones. You know... There's a lot of uh, audio carrier getting in there. See how the, you get the noise with the audio? See all the crosstalk from the audio in the picture? It seems to be getting better as it runs. Do these capacitors need to break in? I'm 66 years old, and thanks to Crepe Erase, I'm showing off my legs again. New and improved Crepe Erase Advanced is a simple two-step system that is fragrance-free, dermatologist-tested, and safe for sensitive skin. It's clinically shown to reduce the look of crepey skin on the body. In fact, in a clinical study, 6% of women saw an improvement in the look of crepey skin in only four weeks. I love the way I feel. I feel comfortable in my own skin. Step one is the body smoothing pre-treatment. This luxurious skin polishing pre-treatment has naturally derived castor oil beads. Free today. That's right. Call now and take advantage of this free national giveaway. And this special TV offer gets even better. Because if you call right now, Purity has a second free... This thing has got a whole bunch of problems. The rolling, the crosstalk, and the picture. Okay, time to geek out with the schematic for a minute. So I'll try and hold the camera as still as I can, which is going to be very difficult. I know on a big TV or something, the bouncy picture is real aggravating. So the sync signal comes out of here, goes into this transistor. Well, first, I think that two microfarad right there was that non-polarized one. I don't know why SAMS is showing it as a, a polarized capacitor. So the sink comes in here and the sink is, the horizontal sink is pulled off. 
right here down to the horizontal sink phase blarble mushroom and then the vertical comes to here and we're supposed to have that on the base and we're supposed to have that on the collector now it's interesting that they're using a vertical blocking transformer here I, I don't I thought that was something they used in the real old sets at least I think that's what that's called so we need to look for if this transistor was low gain that would definitely explain why we um, you know why we don't have a solid vertical sink pulse going in here because this is the pulse that triggers this to lock it so it doesn't roll so we should have 3 volts on the base and 11 volts on the uh, collector there are no electrolytics in this wonder if I changed that. I'm sure I did. Look at all the little integrated couplets in the IF. I wonder if one of these went clerky twinkler and that's why it seems to have an IF problem. How would you even isolate this? This is kind of interesting. One, two, so it rolls twice. One, okay, that time it rolled twice. That time it rolled once. That time it rolled twice. This time it'll roll once. There's a definite pattern there. There's a definite uh, harmonic thing going on. And I got the scope on the base of that transistor, the second sync amp. So there it's not rolling. There it's rolling. So, what I see that I don't think should be there is a sine wave. That underlying, this sine wave right here. It's like power supply filter hum. Why would there be filter hum? It's got brand new filters. You know, and you actually look at this with no signal. This is no signal. And it almost looks like filter ripple, but there is no filter ripple. I mean, I'm looking at it on the scope, and it's right where the schematic says it should be. So this is very weird. All right. This was suggested in the first video, but I just thought it was filter capacitors. I'm running it off these 26650 batteries here, 12 volts. And you can see it's, uh, I wouldn't say it's rock solid, but it's pretty good. I mean, of course, it's not going to have any ripple right now because it's running off of batteries. So why does it have ripple even with new filter capacitors? And I'm sure they're installed right and it was doing it prior to this in the first video. What is going on here? Says is arming itself with a new generation of 
you can see it rolling, that little thing going through as it rolling. This is looking at the power supply output. And you can see that fluctuation from the audio in the picture. So something's not in this power supply is not right. I was looking at this speaker and this is the speaker that's bad that's in the TV and it's a 30 ohm speaker. And the speaker I have hooked up substituting this right now is I think a 6 ohm speaker. Yeah, it's a 6 ohm speaker. So I, I dug up a, I dug this little guy up here, which is a 32 ohm. I'm gonna connect this and then we'll crank it up and we'll keep an eye on the scope and we'll see if we get the audio fluctuation with the proper uh, resistant speaker because a six ohm speaker is gonna draw a hell of a lot more power off the amp than a 32 ohm speaker. So I might be causing that problem. Okay, well, going to a 32 ohm speaker, it actually seemed to make it worse. You're looking at the dip in the power supply voltage with the peaks in the audio. He's crediting the role with catapulting his career and landing him an Oscar. I wouldn't have got the, the role of Freddie Mercury in Bohemian Rhapsody if it wasn't for this show. This in great shape. So right now I'm running it off of batteries and these are A123 26650s. This is basically part of a pack out of an electric car. This will deliver almost unlimited current, 800 amps or so. It's 12 volts and I'm running the TV off of it and the vertical is, the vertical's okay. But the picture is still trash. I know it probably looks okay in the camera. And this also, running it on the battery gets rid of the flicker from the um, audio. But it looks like trash. I mean, just... And turning the fine tuning. I mean, I guess it. Nah, look at the text. And we're getting the audio uh, crosstalk in the picture. That might be adjustable. Wonder if this thing's got a bad detector diode. I've seen bad detector diodes, bad germanium detector diodes create issues like this, or it could be a bad germanium transistor. It's just, I want to say low bit rate, but that's not, it's not bit rate, it's just, it's like low, what's the word I'm looking for? It's like lo-fi, it's just, looks like trash. Like I say, there's no AGC adjustment. So that's running off a battery in the... Running off a battery does correct two things, which is the AC ripple and the audio affecting 
picture function. Now I'm back on AC power. Notice how it flashes to the audio. And you cannot get it to stay locked. Is it a bad selenium rectifier? All right, I'm going to try and adjust the 4.5 megahertz trap and get rid of that audio crosstalk on the picture and that that uh, good lighting, huh? That is that right there next to the capacitor, that little black one. So I'm going to try and adjust that. I got the generator hooked up. There we go again. Do you see that noise in the picture? If I can get up on this. So I'm running on the battery right now. See that noise there? I'm going to turn the sound off on the generator. See how that goes away? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and line this 4.5 megahertz trap. See if it affects that. Here we go. There's no effect on it whatsoever. Something loose on this board. Boy, I sure picked a good one to recap. Well, what a basket case. So, adjusting, this is, this noise is what you see when there's, you know, speech on the picture that when you're watching TV and this, you see this people talking and you see this crap here. It's, uh, audio interference and it's weird it sure seems like it's sure seems like the audio level affects it like there's just bad filtration somewhere you know what's going on with this thing what did I miss in the recapping I'm running on batteries right now. I'm running on three twenty six six fifties lithium ion batteries, and I don't twelve volts, and I don't understand why I'm getting all this AC noise everywhere. Oh, and I'm into the IF. I'm bypassing the tuner. Boy, I, I sure picked a good one to recap, man. This is. What a headbanger. I'm attacking the audio problem with the audio going in and out and I found a broken solder joint or a failed solder joint. It's on the bottom of that audio output transistor right there, TR113. Let me get the magnifying glass on this thing and see if I can dial it in. Wow, that is tough to hold, but can you see that? See how that's failed right there? That is tough to hold steady. Basically it's that joint right there. I guess you can see it. Not as well though. So I'm going to solder that. That should get the 
sound back in, but we still got these weird problems with the hum and IF and the detector, the 1 in 60 detector diode is in that can right there. Right here, it's in that can. So there's a couple test points on top of the tuner and it's down in here and this is where I think it's that little square thing right there. That's where you feed your alignment signal into and I'm not quite sure how to get to that because it's maybe if I pull the top off I don't know. It's a good question. I think it might be time to try substituting this uh, selenium bridge rectifier. That's actually a full selenium bridge rectifier. And I wonder if that's got some in high internal loss, high internal resistance, and it's causing the hum. And Yes, it's very crude, but it's just a temporary testing measure. I've substituted in a modern silicon bridge rectifier there, that little round thing. And um, yeah, we're going to see if this corrects it. I have a feeling it probably won't. It'd really be nice to have this thing ready to go for the 2019 third annual spring Jason JJ Cruise recapping invitational. This would be a fine specimen. But of course this is one of those cases where recapping does not fix the set as is mo the case with most of the stuff I work on. So it might not make the annual Jason JJ Cruz recapping invitational. It might not qualify for such a prestigious event. Grade that will ever be attested to a color. This one, let me come in a little bit tighter on this piece. It's a BS one. There is nothing that can be seen by the eye or the camera. Let's jump really far into it. I love that. Come on, talk. This is over five carats, and because it's 5.05, I know this sometimes sounds crazy if you don't deal with diamonds a lot. The .05 makes the world of difference. A 4.99 is not a 5 carat diamond when you're talking about. Now, okay, so changing the selenium rectifier to silicon did absolutely nothing for it. If you were looking at like 2 carats of little chip diamonds, 1.98 carats or 2 carats, in, that doesn't really matter. That doesn't really matter. one certified GIA diamonds do. Nothing like looking at a $50,000 diamond on a TV that just won't work right. Woof. There it is. There okay. it is. This is the GIA certification for it. Cushion modified brilliant. Ooh, cushion modified. VS1 with excellent polish. VX1 excellent polish ring. I've been offered $38,500 so far. Yeah, there is a comp right now that's over $5 million for a five carat yellow fancy diamond in the VS range, and I think that was a VS2. Now, when you start getting into VVS, those rings start becoming eight and $10 million. That's being, if it was a VS2, I wouldn't say it, but it's all bling. It's all frivolous bling. Unless it's on a diamond cutting wheel or a record player needle, I don't want anything to do with it. It's frivolous. Everybody's just been been awed by this piece. It has no functional purpose other than bling. It was forty five thousand open, absolute minimum. But I've got ten minutes with everyone. I am asking everyone to think about the investment that you can make in that type of diamond tonight. Bling, bling, bling. So it is a big lot. It's actually two together, I believe. Big lot. About 40 miles south of Albuquerque. And we'll 
take a look at it on the map here in just a couple of seconds. But I, I will tell you, okay. you are in the middle of some of I went back to the selenium rectifier and it's way worse. I think. Albuquerque is just north. Like I said, about 50 miles north. Let's zoom in just a little bit if we can, guys. Hey, there we go. Take a look. Beautiful mountainscape right here next to you. So there you go. You're right there next to the mountainscape. Hey, look, I'm kind of a ghost. This is a tough one, guys. This is a tough one. No wonder why there's not many people restoring these. You know, it could have screwed up germanium transistors in the IF. Uh, although it doesn't look too bad right now. It almost seems like it's getting better. I might just let it run for a while. Got to break those new electrolytics in, especially those audio file, those Nichicon gold caps. Got to break those in. Uh, I am kind of being sarcastic, maybe a little bit. Start literally right here. So you are, as I said, the, the sunrise and sunsets are going to be spectacular. Go ahead and zoom in, guys. Take a little bit closer look at it. There it is. Now, something else I want to point out right here. Do you know what this is? Does anybody know what that is? Rio Grande River. There my brother, there's your river. I went ahead and installed the silicon bridge rectifier. I left the selenium bridge in place and I'm just using it as a terminal strip. I'd like to start off today with a bit of a an inspirational advertisement and I swear this is real. 1965 Zenith Roundy, 100% recapped, 90% new tubes, needs CRT. In the same advertisement, there are three CRT testers for sale. Sorry, your Mensa membership has been denied. In fact, we are sending the short bus to confiscate the rest of your vintage television collection. So taking the top off, actually, I should have done that a long time ago, gives great serviceability access to the tuner as far as alignment goes. We're going to end up checking the alignment on this, but I got to get this hum bar out of it first. And uh, I, I just don't know what's causing that. I've, you know, I've checked everything, uh, except maybe these weird transistors. We can take a look at the schematic. They call it active filtering. I was going to look at and talk about this active filtering, active power filter. But the AC hum is actually borderline acceptable with this replaced. So I'm on to the overloading problem now. And I, this, is a, this thing is tough. There's no AGC adjustment here at all. So this is the AGC and the AGC keying. And this is the AGC line right here. It's point A, which controls the bias on the IF transistors. And I'm measuring this point, and it does not change. It's fixed at 7 volts. Your relationship, Team Monsoon. All new tomorrow at 9 on MTV. Performance is your profession, but you strive to take the... So, the rolling is still a bit of a problem, but it's decent. And this has a local DX switch on top of it. And that's on DX. If I put it on local, I mean, no, it's on local. If I put it on DX, it just completely overloads. And I'm watching the uh, AGC voltage, and it doesn't move. It's 7 point, right now it's 7.14. 7.19 it, it just doesn't move it's like the AGC is not working the AGC should regulate the uh, gain and there is no AGC pot on this so I don't know maybe that's located related to the 99 barbecue balloons all right, and this transistor, when I press the local DX 
switch. The emi both the emitter and base voltages change, but the collector does not. All right, I lifted the collector out of there and the flavor profile stayed the same. So I wonder if that transistor is bad. Okay, this transistor tests okay. I don't know if I believe that. I might substitute it. I'm back on the battery and yeah, you know, I think I'm going to have to just take a break from this one and come back to it because um, the video has just gotten pretty chaotic and I, I, I took those AGC transistors out and checked them and they were okay. I checked all the resistors, they were okay. I checked the diode, it was okay. I put it back together and yeah, I, I just the voltage is varying a little bit and that voltage kind of comes off of the detector diode so I'm I think my next thing might be to start singing into drumsticks like Phil Collins is here because that's that's really about where I'm at with this thing he, he is he's singing into drumsticks Check this out. What I did is I put a composite input, fed the composite input straight out of the direct TV box right into the video where the video input would be on the schematic, which would be right. Let's see if so what I do what I'm doing is I'm going in right there to test point two, point B. See that? B, right out of the video detector, and look at the picture I get. And that's on AC, and look at this. I'm turning the vertical. I'm going the other way, going the other way, going the other way, going the other way. I'm quarter turn, quarter turn, let's see, at least a quarter turn or more, and it's locked as solid as can get. Yeah, I know it's blanking a little bit. What is wrong? It's got to be something in the IF. It's And there's no uh, hint of AC line hunt. Well, maybe there's a little bit. But look at this. This fixes the vast majority of it. It's got to be something in that detector. I got to take that and check that detector diode out. I'm going to do it right now. I, I, I got to pull it apart. But yeah, I mean, look at it. It's rock solid and it's got decent definition. I'll go back to the IF. Of course, there's no audio. Spending so much of your life underwater, you learn to talk to yourself. What you don't learn is how to talk to others. The black line on the bottom of the pool never talks back. If I could go back in time, I would tell my younger self to open up and to work with a professional therapist. Therapy can dramatically change your life. It helped me a lot, so you should try it for yourself. Get $50 off your first month of Talkspace therapy with coupon Michael50. Brought to you by Talkspace. You need therapy after fighting with a Sears. It is blossom time. The apple blossoms tell me it's time for Angry Orchard Rosé Cider. We're using red fleshed apples, which gives the cider its rosy hue. Anyway, that's what it looks like on the IF. Cider for springtime. Special night tomorrow. That's the IF. I'm going to go back to the video. That's composite video M. Composite video in. VH1 presents Dear Mama, a love letter to mom, tomorrow at 10. CIF.
Look at the clarity of the text. Either the IF is way out of alignment or there's a bad transistor or the detector diode's bad, period. Well, there's a detector diode and it doesn't measure bad. All right, we're going to have to dig into this in part two. There's something wrong right here in this IF strip. And I don't know. This is going to be a difficult fix, but we got to do it. So, I mean, sorry, part three. Part three will be the IF. The fact that it had a dinette to work at and also a couch to sit on. Yeah. I didn't really like how the bathroom was set up there. I know, and that's something that was important to us because we wanted a little extra privacy. Yeah. This Class C is over the Fiori's budget of $95,000, but it's under 30 feet long, so they could easily take it into national parks. I really like the layout in the kitchen. There was definitely enough space in there for us both to work, but it didn't have a couch. Yeah, that was annoying. And there was no outdoor kitchen. That's true. But it did have that nice-sized U-shaped dinette. It did. That would be a really great place to work. Yeah. This fifth wheel is way under budget. And has the shower. I love my fifth wheel. Okay, that was with the audio just directly into the amp, which there's still a regulation problem and a bit of hum here. But you can see, going in with the composite video, I still got the detector diode pulled loose. Just incredible picture. There's something in the IF that's screwed up. So, uh, next video, we're going to figure this thing out. So I need to do kind of a last minute update. I was just going through and measuring the voltages on the IF transistors and I found that I have 9 volts here on the collector of this one. So I started checking this and this coil is open. This IF can is open. It should be, it should have a path to ground right here and it doesn't which would kind of make sense in what we're seeing because the detector diodes right here that you know would probably cause uh, misbehavior like a bad detector diode but yeah this guy is open and unfortunately this is going to be an unobtainable part might be able to take it apart and fix it but it's going to be microsurgery and we're going to attempt it in the next video, but that would make sense why we have the performance issues, we have the audio noise interfering with the picture, we have the rolling because th this IF transformer is open. And I don't even know how this transistor is doing anything. It must just be passing through here. There really can't be any gain without this path to ground through this inductor. So maybe that's why there's no static too. So yeah, I basically found that just by doing base DC voltage checks here. And they're they're all all correct except this collector. And I, you know, I followed it. It's open. So uh, part number 3, I guess. I was asked if I could look up this Sony someone wanted to restore they lost the volume control for it TV 920U 1970 and I kinda guessed it was a 5k and there it is 5000 ohms so there you go you need a 5k volume control to get your Sony working again this is all discreet no chips in this. This is a 230 millimeter CRT. Looks like lots of capacitors in this thing. Lots of capacitors. Looks a lot like the uh, set we're working on here actually. See if I could get to the parts list. I'll scan the parts list real quick. Come on. 
Here you go, Cap electrolytic capacitors. So I'm gonna scan this real quick. And this is what the pause control is for. So these are what you need to order. Look at that, a 12.5 volt electrolytic. Just order them all. See anything else here? Anyway, I hope that helps. Hope that helps you get your little Sony working. side stick rectifier horizontal sweep circuit adjustment see in the same year we had an admiral let's see what the admiral looks like hybrid Well, this is a color set. Is the 40 KD DK6. This is these are all gone, man. These little hybrids like that all gone. So tough to find.